Praise the Lord, everyone. I would like to turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and read verse 17. This is a passage we've been uh, meditating on for the last couple days, and I'd encourage you to keep meditating because God will speak to you in the way that he wants to speak to you and reveal to you the things that he wants to reveal to you. And the Bible says, And he came and he preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. To both the person who believes in Jesus and who knows Jesus today and to you who may not know Jesus and this may be your first ever experience with him. Jesus brings peace to you and he preaches peace to you and he wants to share his peace with you. How wonderful is it that we have a God who cares so deeply for us that he would give his only son to bring us peace so that we may live in shalom even though the world is not at that place. In John chapter 14, verse 27, if you could turn there, this is what Jesus is speaking to uh, with his disciples before he's crucified. And he says to them in John chapter 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, this world, as we've mentioned, will give you trouble. It will cause you to be afraid. But God says, I'm giving you my peace. I'm leaving it with you. And this is before Jesus has been crucified and he's reassuring his disciples here in this moment. And when you are doing your personal study, I would encourage you to read John's chapter uh, 14 to 16. Those three chapters, 14, 15, 16, is Jesus speaking to his disciples and he's now giving them advice and he's giving them counsel. But he's also talking to him to the disciples of the gifts and the promises that are in store for them. And he shows them the love and the hope that he is going to claim because of the cross and the things that we will now get to experience because of the cross. And as you finish reading this passage and the whole chapter and what Jesus is saying, you'll notice that in John chapter 16, verse 33, which is a verse we refer to many times, he repeats a similar message as to what he said in John 14, 27. And he says, these things, all the counsel, all the advice, all the promises, everything I've spoken to you, that you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer, Jesus has overcome the world. And he reiterates to us that this world will cause us to have an unsettled feeling and an unsettled environment. However, he has overcome, and so we can have peace. This now leads into the moment where Jesus is going to be crucified and the events following is the story and the depiction of Jesus' crucifixion. But praise be to God on the third day he rises again and now he comes to his disciples and he meets his disciples again after he had just been crucified and rose again. And in John chapter 20 verse 19, he greets his disciples and he says to them again, peace be with you. Earlier he said, I'm giving it to you. And now he says, let it be with you. And then he repeats it again in verse 21. He says, peace to you. He made himself known to his disciples after he died and he rose again, after he fought the battle to win for us salvation. And he says, my peace is with you. How wonderful and how beautiful is this passage and this moment right here that Jesus interacts with his disciples and that same message is now passed to us. No matter who you are, no matter what is going on in your life today, remember that Jesus, because of the cross, is leaving peace with you in your home, is leaving peace with you in your personal life, leaving peace with you in your education, leaving peace in your career. His peace, not the peace of the world, but his peace because of what he has done for us through the cross. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day.